when we think about the observer, we think about the observer as themselves a bundle of GD6 in multi-way space. And so then what we're asking is, when we ask this question, what's the probability for something to happen? What we're essentially asking is, how do the threads by which that thing can happen in the multi-way graph, how do those overlap the threads which are, exist inside the observer? And we're not, you know, this is still in gestation, it's still being worked through, but roughly what happens is that the threads of the observer and the threads of the thing being observed, you're essentially uh, to sort of make a correspondence between these things, you're matching up every thread with every thread. And that's essentially where you end up getting this notion of the squaring of amplitudes to get probabilities is by virtue of the fact that what matters is kind of all the ways that these threads can be matched up. At least that's the, that's uh, maybe Jonathan has a crisper way to say this. We, we're, we're actually, this is somewhat related to Jonathan's uh, interpretation of quantum mechanics in terms of completions that I think gives a nice way to understand what's going on here. Um, and maybe Jonathan wants to, wants to make a, um, uh, a better crisper statement of this. I don't think there's that much more to add. I think I think you already said it pretty well. So so yeah. I mean, when you when you have states that would otherwise just you know in in a conventional formulation of quantum mechanics would destructively interfere, uh, we've seen. Uh, you can go back. I think you can watch our quantum computing discussion for an explicit example of this. You see that they they end up as as being as being on opposite <coughs> ends of branchial spaces, as as Stephen said, which correspond effectively to orthogonal vectors with respect to the multi-way evolution graph. So then. Um, as Stephen mentioned, one kind of operative way we have of modeling quantum measurement is in terms of these completion procedures, where we say the observer is, is defining equivalences between these microstates, uh, 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 where those equivalences are defined by that observer's particular choice of reference frame, that particular choice of, of quantum observation frame. Um, and so then what happens is, when so the, 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 those two uh, microstates that, that happen to, to destructively interfere, they are sort of maximally branch-like separated, when you translate that into the language of completions, what that means is you cannot consistently perform a completion on those two microstates without destroying all of the information. And so, as, as Stephen mentioned, sort of the geometrical inter interpretation for that is in order to be able to measure those two states, the observer would have to ha build some measurement, op uh, some piece of measurement apparatus that was so extended in branchial space that it would basically measure everything and therefore would, would yield zero net information. In the completion case, we can actually show that explicitly that the only symmetric completion procedure they can apply that would define an equivalence between those two states is one that yields exactly zero information. And so, so you can say in a very precise sense that the, that the path weights for those two states cancel out.